Hey guys, how's it going? It is day two for you guys here at Monrovia Nursery with me and I am so excited to take you guys along. Today is going to be some topiary and um, they've got another couple classes like camellias and I'm just I'm really excited. So we're gonna do a lot of learning today and I think I'm gonna like be a little more slowed down. You guys know I'm all about the topiaries and we're about to see some spirals and some of these um, pom-pom poodle topiary styles being created. And I'm really, really excited to learn how to do this and um, they're gonna show us like kind of start all the way up to a finished product like this one so let's jump into it because we have a really busy day and um i'm halfway through the day but for you guys it is day two so let's get into it <laughs> So he's turning this one into the pom pom. Into a pom pom. It's right in the middle. Shopping. Shopping, exactly what it is. Oh. Oh. I feel like we should have music. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, what he's doing, he's looking to making sure that we have the proper. Uh, branching so that it forms the pom pom that we want and as, as you can see he'll he'll start dissecting towards the middle cleaning it up looking to see which ones are the branches that we can develop that'll produce a better pom pom on the edges and that we can make it into a bomb uh, with the final product which is similar to that right there it, it takes anywhere for a two gallon size uh, uh, four to six years depending on what we have well, that's finished but th that's a finished product. So this one's product. about two and a half years old. So two and a half years before two, you start really years. training it. Right. Yeah. Correct. Okay. It's five years old, just in a two yeah. gallon. Yeah. So you can imagine how yeah. old those ones over there are. So you guys will continue to grow this on for another two years yes. after this. Correct. Yes. Correct. To get to this. Wow. Saleable. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And it's had multiple prunings to create the bowl. Wow. So for a topiary, this is quick, which is why not many growers do this. Because yeah. it's a lot of work mm -hmm. and a long time. And are you guys keeping the loppers in oil? Over there? Over there? Disinfect they they like disinfect them. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when you are doing this and you're going from juniper to juniper, you can, you could pass a disease from one plant to the next. So mm -hmm. between every plant, they're going to disinfect. There's a technique and method that he uses. There's a there's a length of how how far he does it so that the that the pad or the pom pom is uh, connected, and they they all vary in the sizes so that you have more of a symmetrical with the middle one being sitting up at a higher higher um, higher level with the other ones around it. So uh, he's getting uh, the measurement that we have. It's uh, tools that they use to making sure that we have a consistency on, on the pom-poms wow. that, that he's building right now. So when's the next cutting wow. of this one? So, so this one, so we're gonna start to get a good flesh right now as uh, spring starts approaching. So may, maybe in another 12 weeks, they'll come in here, do another light tip. And then depending on the growth, they'll be looking at it. Typically our, the plants, every six to eight weeks, they grow pretty, pretty good here. So that's when they look at it and evaluate and making sure that we get to that constant pruning. And, and this again has to be done by, with the pruners that he has. We can't do this with mechanization or nothing like that. Everything has to be consistent on our craftsmanship of what we do. And then when do you guys put the support wires? So he does it once he gets the actual measurement, he'll start training it from this point on. Okay. So he'll come, put them, and then they'll start growing into it and developing that final product right yeah. now, final plant. So that's why he has a uh, his uh, his uh, e, um, uh, stakes here ready to, so that we can do that. I mean, and we we get here pretty hot. Yeah. Yeah. And we can be consistent for up to 38 days of over 100 and you know 100 degrees, 105 degrees, and we'll be doing this through the summer. And it's. Uh, no, but timing is really important because yeah. we want to get a flush. Yeah. Correct. Right. So if we do it after the flush, then they're gonna sit there after he's done this and not do anything for months even though we're watering it's so hot they just aren't going to push much growth in the summer okay so we want to get this work done ahead of the flush so that they flush and we can then he can start to train the ball on the top okay. mm -hmm. 
So, yeah. okay. so here we go. I'm gonna start with my. We didn't start the timer. Oh, the timer? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> no pressure. Oh, that would be interesting. So we have to prune it again, again, again. Each time we're shifting it to a larger. That's what I was totally. Okay, so this is how it starts out with these little teeny tiny liners. This little plant, it'll stay like that for about one year, two months, and it gets potted up into the next one, and it stays like that for one year, four months. And then it goes from that to being trained, which we just saw it being trained, and then, you know, you can see the structure down here. And this is one that needs to be sheared back again. And it'll stay like this for two years, three months. And then this is it. This is the final finished product. And then these are the 15 gallons that they have. These are the um, pom-pom style. And then they've got the spiral topiaries that we saw get trained up. And then you can see they have spirals that just go on and on and on. There are so many of them. And they said that these pom-poms are the ones that take the longest to grow before they're ready to go out into the public and be sold at nurseries. So this is the biggest size. And these are the ones that take the absolute longest. Now we are in the greenhouse. This is mostly what? Andavillas? Andavilla, yep. Andavilla. Okay. Massive greenhouse. So here are our beneficials, the ones we use to help control our pest. And this is, um, we try to use these just to reduce the risk, uh, I mean the, um, the use of pesticides, so this helps us a lot. So our beneficials, we're starting to incorporate a lot of this. And um, for example, the, this one is called an apifar, which is like a parasitic wasp. It injects the aphid with an egg, millibug. And these are actually moving around right now, if you guys want to see it. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> whoa, whoa. Our main, that the beneficials, what we try to target. Those and uh, mandevillas in particular. Yeah, totally. Mandevillas are susceptible to aphids. Whitefly, this year uh, we've been seeing a lot of improvement. Um, mainly aphids, uh, mites as well. But these beneficials are should have helped us control all those pests. The beneficials insect to help combat the. One of the areas, just to point out too, that we're focusing on a lot too is uh, we're working towards a. Uh, using it in propagation so that they work their way over here so that they're more integrated and we're able to control them from the beginning because what we don't want to do is uh, uh, take action when it's already there we want to have preventatives in place to help them with that so that helps like Alex mentioned and Marta and their team it helps us reduce the use of any type of chemical that we have out there and this has been very successful so far as to uh, what Alex and that team has done and been working with. For the most part if you get a hold of this company itself you can order these yourself. A lot of garden centers are now selling. Yeah, yeah they are. Um, you know they're selling ladybugs. Right. Selling yeah. They're yeah. selling beneficial yeah. insects. Yeah. You can order them online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We obviously order them in large quantities. Go ahead and go up to the plant and hang it. And in like around two weeks, this will control white fly and thrips. So there's like eggs on those that'll hatch? Yeah. What it is? Yeah. Okay. The little containers, you can either do it with this or individually go ahead and walk around the whole section and do it yourself. But this is, seems to be the most efficient way to do it. Alright, sample. I'm going to yeah, get away. So. I don't want to bug it. <laughs> The biggest problem where we are, Leslie, in Oakland is aphids. I mean, I can go out and see, like, uh oh, I've got, they're just all over it. Yeah. So I think shipping the, you know, the little sachet along with the plant and just kind of getting in the mind of the consumer, like, the more you address the aphid problem, you know, early, as you were saying, Correct. you can combat it. But biologicals can take care of the aphid problem. Quick. 
Um, the other thing about the peach, so that's a newer peach, as you've heard, you know, peach, Pantone color of the year. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think that I'm expecting that people will really be Me loving too. this one. <laughs> this is year Three. one or two? Year two Three. that we've been selling it. Three. Three, really? We but we now we now have enough, I guess. <laughs> we now have enough that we can talk about it. Three indoor outdoor shade. And, I mean, just just stunning. Really stunning. Yeah. So begonias grow their foliage one way, their leaves one way. So we put two plugs per pot, and we orientate the foliage so that we can get a fuller plant that'll give you foliage all throughout the container. We call this Caldera, uh, that's the te Tectonic series. They're all named after different, uh, um, so we've got... Pretty earthy. Yeah, yeah, so they're, they're, all, they're all named after uh, different names, but each, each leaf on this guy... Yeah. It's massive. Oh, God. Yeah. Wow. Two feet across. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Really special. Yeah, it's right really there. cool. Yeah, right. And it does get a flower, uh, but it's white and it isn't super showy. But the flower sits up under the right. foliage. It looks really cool. Yeah, it is cool. Oh. In the wild at Vietnam, oh, it was eight foot tall. I've never seen a real one in my face, but I've seen it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool. Now, how quickly will it get to that really good? So, thing? in the right environment, shade, okay, <laughs> understory. Um, and you're going to get um, by the end of this year that it, the leaves should be wow. kind of 12 inches across. And then if you've got it in the right environment, that following year it'll get there quick and go from there. Do you guys already have this one out on the market? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And this is another one that we introduce and then we get enough quantity and then you can really find it. So this is the little crop right here. Mm -hmm. It does well. It's hardy to zone seven. So it's a lot more hardy than some of the other varieties. We just got in from the trolley. It's been such a long day. I'm so exhausted. I just checked everything out in the fields and now we're gonna go inside. We're gonna go have lunch and then um, we're getting a presentation with a few little sneak peeks of plants that'll be out in 2025. So let's go in, have lunch and do the whole presentation. And then we're doing camellias and I think one more event. For that front yard, we're still talking front yard inspiration here with Sheer Genius Cotoneaster. But it shears really well. So you can see here, it does create this really beautiful, nice ball of foliage. So if we're looking at alternatives to something like a boxwood. Next is an Ilex. This is Emerald Boxer, a new plant out of Dr. Reuter. He's the University of Georgia um, professor and uh, breeder of many great plants. And then another Ilex. Um, regrettably, this is a new plant, and so we don't have a photo of the berry, but this is a new berrying um, blue holly. We call it Little One. And then another for the front yard is Thuya occidentalis. This is a nice rounded ball of golden foliage, a foot and a half to two feet tall and wide is all. Um, well, there are a few on the market that by the eye look like this. Um, this is a vast improvement on um, on some of the others that are out there just surely for its sun tolerance its ability to not burn in the sun and then another interesting um, variety a series of plants that i think of for the front yard is a summer lasting crepe myrtle and so um, one of the newest edibles to our collection is bountiful baby this is a blueberry as you can see it is super compact, so two to three feet tall by two to three feet wide. Allium is a great crossover for this edible and pollinator garden uh, because it is edible, but it also attracts a load of pollinator plants. Cobalt Millennium is the newest variety. I'm really excited about this for 2024. We'll have it almost black veining. So quite funky, quite three-dimensional, a really cool new plant. I really like this one. This banana split Daphne is a good example of that. This is an improvement on Aria marginata. It has a super bright yellow uh, variegated margin here. It's much brighter and much wider 
than um, Aria marginata. And then of course we can't talk about the classic plant without talking about Hydrangea macrophylla. And um, if you are unfamiliar with our Seaside and Serenade collection, I'll just give you an overview about what uh, makes the whole collection really special. Um, one is that they are compact, so three foot tall by about three to four foot wide, and they are quite rigid. So the stems themselves are super, super strong. And then uh, roses here, I sort of clumped them all so you can see our new editions of roses. Um, the, our, our series of Uday Parfume, which is Shrub Rose, that we are introducing more fragrance into roses again. Um, for the longest time, breeders were focused on on um, disease resistance and low maintenance roses for the garden. And in doing that, it was really hard to get fragrance in. And so you were getting, fragrance was being lost from a lot of these really fabulous uh, garden roses. But now we've been able to marry those two. So with Uday Perfume, you have low maintenance disease, uh, disease resistant roses. We have a new Pittosporum for 2025. It's called Potbelly. Uh, typically, crassifoliums are going to be 9 to 12 feet tall, but potbelly is going to be 3 to 4 feet tall and wide. So significantly more compact, the cutest foliage you'll ever see, and wonderful for the coastal gardens as well. Also, we'll have a new Bountiful Blueberry next year. It's called Bountiful Bell. <clears throat> so this is, I have terrible pictures from trials, but just to give you an idea of what's coming. Uh, fruit snacks. Yeah, they're pretty phenomenal. They're, you know, these are gonna be 12 feet tall by three feet wide. So perfect for the urban gardener. Um, <clears throat> and they come in a lot of different varieties. And they still flower really nicely, which is another bonus of an apple tree in the yard. And since we've been talking about espalier so much today, here is the timeline to be able to go from this little cutting here to a full espalier, it's four years. So you can see they spend 87 weeks as cuttings, just like that. And then they spend 108 weeks potted up like that, 30 weeks being trained, and then they spend a total of four years. And then this is the final result. This here is a new process that we're doing. This was the old method that we, that we were doing where it was just one liner that it would take us another two additional years to produce a camellia. Um, when you do this, it produces lots of buds, uh, lots of buds when we're doing the pruning here correctly. However, with that, you'll get two times more the amount of flowering and buds. In. By Job, I think we got it. If I may say, I'm not real. It's absolutely great. Very nice. Two. Okay, California container. We chose this one because um, we wanted lots of different texture. We wanted lots of different colors, but we wanted everything to kind of flow together. We also wanted people to be able to put this on their patio and then not have to be hooked up to drip irrigation. If it dries out for a few days, everything that's in here will be fine. Very nice. And then so we chose this. This is a hop seed bush because it's an evergreen and not many people in California are using this. And so we wanted to bring it in there. It changes colors. You get bright green, which ties back into the grass in the summertime. And then you get this burgundy color in the wintertime tying into all of our succulents. And then we wanted it to have a beautiful smell too. Nice. Yeah. Woo! We'll call it moody. moody. Oh, Mediterranean. Love that. So, that describes uh, me perfectly. Me too. <laughs> um, just to sit patio side, you can get the fragrance of the rosemary, the lavender, the pop of purple. Uh, and then is just because it's such a cool plant, we couldn't resist it. 
and then the black mondo grass to kind of just set it off, give it that shoot. Yeah. <laughs> so we did a container challenge, and these are our containers. This was my group. So we have the hop seed bush. We have some grasses in here, some sedum, some lavender. And then this is the next one with rosemary in here. So delicious. And agave, lavender, and some black mondo grass. And then this one they described it as like a California sunset. And they did all kinds of different things. An abelia, some succulents, some more sedum. This is the little ragu. You guys know I love the little ragu. Sweet bay. Just like a huge color of plants in here. This one's really, really pretty. And I mean, just the uses of, you know, reds and purples and blues and greens and just every color in this California sunset one. All right, you guys, that is gonna be it for this video. This was a whole day. This was so much. And you can see all of the crazy things behind me. It was just an amazing trip and I met some amazing people. And I'm so glad that I was able to take you guys along with me. It was so much fun. So I'm gonna head home. I got five hour drive, five and a half hour drive. It's a long one. I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.